Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A national review of gender equality and the elimination of gender-based violence in St. Lucia gets underway. St. Lucia hosts the delegation of cruise line executives to focus on maximizing benefits to local suppliers. The SLHTA preps for the annual Taste of the Caribbean culinary competition. All that, plus the latest in youth development and sports. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has announced plans for a national review of gender equality and the elimination of gender-based violence in St. Lucia in accordance with commitments to the Commission on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women ratified in 1982 and the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action agreed to in 1995. More from Chris Sackney. The plan to execute the National Review was revealed at a recently held meeting among stakeholders from 18 governmental departments, agencies and civil society organizations. They were engaged in highly productive discussions on thematic areas for the promotion of gender equality and the supporting programs and activities planned for the year. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Michelle Charles, says this national review is expected to inform a report on the country's progress in implementing the Beijing Platform for Action during the past 25 years. She says an outstanding report to the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women is expected to be completed by the end of this year. This can only redound to better crafted policies and actions that reflect accurately our local context and provide solutions that address our own peculiarities. It would mean too that St. Lucia will be better placed to strengthen our relationships with regional and international parties. It would mean being easier supported by external agencies as our requests can be couched in the presentation of evidence-based research that reflects our context. An analysis of current statistics revealed disturbing trends in the increase of gender-based violence, including high underreporting of offenses and the timely response of essential services to the issues of gender-based violence on the island. Ms. Charles says the execution of this national review couldn't be more timely. The timing of this national review is very opportune as the Department of Gender Relations has before it national, regional, and international mandates that have to be fulfilled. The unit is small and so lacks the manpower and capacity to achieve in its entirety and in a timely manner the assigned tasks. This year, the work of the unit centers around four thematic areas, these being gender-based violence, health, governance, and climate change. Gender equality in social protection systems was another highlight on the agenda of the stakeholders' meeting. The latest poverty assessment it was highlighted revealed that single female-headed households continue to be the poorest in St. Lucia in keeping with a global trend of feminization of poverty. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. The Department of Tourism Information and Broadcasting, in an effort to further develop and maximize the benefits of tourism, will this year focus on the development and management of the cruise sector. In this regard, one of the initial activities for the year 2019 is to enhance communication with the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, the FCCA, and bring together stakeholders who play a key role in the management of the cruise sector to better understand the sector and have direct dialogue with cruise executives on areas for development. As the year 2019 is focused on revenue generation within the tourism sector, the department has also organized a forum for local suppliers and the FCCA to dialogue on deepening linkages within the cruise sector. It is therefore anticipated that approximately 50 local suppliers will gain access to trade directly with cruise lines. The sessions will be held on Thursday, 7th February 2019 at the Dolphins Conference Room of the Bay Gardens Beach Resort. Ensuring value for money on all public infrastructure projects remains a top priority for Department of Infrastructure. Against that backdrop, the Department has issued a call to the general public and private sector to make use of the Material Testing Laboratory. Officials say the lab is an important component of the state apparatus 
to guarantee citizens the highest quality standards on all projects undertaken. More from Janelle Novell. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour is urging members of the public and business entities to take advantage of the material laboratory. According to engineer assistant attached to the lab, Bernard Sensir, the lab ensures quality control of materials used for various projects, including ministry works. Sensir noted that only a few members of the public utilize the available services. He highlights why individuals who may be embarking on construction or building projects should take advantage of the services. We would imagine that um, people need to know um, the quality of material used. If you have inferior quality, that means your product will be inferior. And so if you use it, obviously you'll have defects eventually in your, in, in, in your structure. And so it's important to actually do the testing so that in the long run you can save your investment. For if you do a construction, construction and it's, it's weak because of material, I mean you lose your entire life investment. So it's important that you do the real testing before the construction is actually started. Services available include grade analysis, compact and moisture tests, to name a few. Though the services offered come with a price tag, Managing Director of Rex General Contractors, Winston Cyril, indicates that the investment is well worth it as it ensures the work done is up to par. Well, we use the lab on a regular basis, especially when we're, when we're doing um, infrastructural work. Um, we want to be sure that the material we are purchasing from the supplier is of the standard that is required by the engineers. And further, we want to be sure also that the quality of product, the, 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 the quality of the construction works that we're giving to our clients are of the highest quality possible. Yeah, so we use the lab on a regular basis and we get our results. If um, it does not meet the requirements based on the results, we redo whatever it takes to do it and to be sure that we get the approval of the engineers. But we want to be sure, we want to be confident that the materials that we use meet the required standards. Interested persons are able to bring in samples for testing or staff can come on site to conduct the tests. For more information or to make a request, you can contact the materials lab at 468-6328 or 468-6329 or cell phone number 721-7881 721-7882. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Independence 40 Committee is moving into high gear as St. Lucia inches closer to its 40th Independence Anniversary. Although the celebrations will span one year, the events leading up to Independence Day are sure to please. Representatives of the various events being put on addressed the media on Wednesday and encouraged all St. Lucians to take part in the event. One of the most anticipated events is the Best of St. Lucia concert. On the eve of Independence, the 21st of February, Castries will be abuzz with major cultural displays and exhibitions. Two event sites within the city are being prepared to host these showcases, one being Constitution Park and the other being Jeremy Street between Block DS and the Castries Market. So in essence, the format for the event is one stage um, within the William Peter Boulevard and another along Jeremy Street right between the Castries Market and what we know as the CDC buildings. The production will capture what is truly St. Lucian in terms of culture which, have been ha which has been handed down through the generations. Um, we will see a cultural heritage and history portrayed, something that we really, really um, cherish. And a number of art forms will be on display, including dance, music, and of course, theatrical performances. Another anticipated event is a feature stage presentation marking the 40th anniversary of St. Lucia's independence. The presentation is being dubbed the St. Lucia Story and takes place on Thursday, February 21st at the Sap Plain Field. It is the story of a young man called Lucien, for obvious reasons, who takes a journey through his past, through his imagination. It's a mystical journey going back through history of St. Lucia, his people, himself, his life. Um, and he visits all the major highlights that have made us who we are today, including the birth of the island, our Amerindian history, our African ancestry, and as well as major milestones in St. Lucia's recent past and present. So it is a, it's a fictitious journey which allows us to explore all of the facets of our national identity. 
I would like to um, say a very heartfelt thanks to the collaborators on this project, uh, my production team headed by Susan Merrill, as well as our director, Drina Frederick, our musical director, Gregory Piper, all of our choreographers, um, who have really brought an amazing cast of people together. The annual Independence Walk on February 21st spans 88 miles across the country. The event is being hosted by the Northern Long Distance Walking Group and is being dubbed the Round the Island Challenge 2019. Wherever you stop is your finish line. So you don't have to do the complete walk. It's not a race, it's a challenge. So um, we're excited that this is the 40th year of independence. We are introducing a relay option. So if you don't want to walk by yourself, you could walk as a team. So there are four legs to this relay option. You could walk from cul-de-sac, it starts at the Massey car park from 5 p.m. So you could walk from cul-de-sac to Soufre, then another member of your team will walk from Soufre to Viewfort, then another member of your team walks from Viewfort to Denry, and then we, the last leg is from Denry to the William Peter Boulevard. So it, it's, it's something that you could do on your own or as a team. It's a great way to see our beautiful island. It's a great way to, to challenge yourself, like we say. St. Lucia's 40th Independence Anniversary Celebrations is being observed under the theme, All In, Our Journey, Our Future. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happening in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Pamela. I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. The annual Taste of the Caribbean Culinary Contest is months away, but the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association is already busy ensuring that the best of St. Lucia would be showcased in Miami come June. We will have the details in a moment, but first, we join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Members of the local media fraternity gathered at the conference room of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Wednesday morning for the press launch of the 2019 Mass United Secondary Schools Cricket Tournament. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Liotta Charlemagne Mason, expressed gratitude that Mass United has persisted for more than three decades in sponsorship of the premier cricket competition among secondary schools on the island. The Ministry is very pleased that you have agreed to support us again this year. We know that every year we, we after the tournament, we, we wonder, are we going to have you back on board with us? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> we were happy when we called and you said, yes, you are on again this year. Um, so we know that we are doing something good. Um, we, we did have a meeting earlier on, or last week, and we have agreed to make some changes and to create some more depth for the competition as well as to to give you our sponsors some more visibility as sponsors and the ministry will will no doubt keep up to your expectations and we will do everything in our honor to ensure that the under the massey under 19 cricket competition is once again a good addition and what you would expect of us mass united representative Faye miller reiterated how pleased they were to be associated with the young upcoming cricketers of St. Lucia. This is the 33rd year we're sponsoring. I mean, I personally feel it's a, it's, our, it's a moral responsibility, really, to give back to the community from which you earn your keep. And um, so we at Massey, 
we're happy and proud to be sponsoring this particular tournament for the 33rd year in a row, might I add. It's an unbroken, un yes, it's unbroken sponsorship. Um, this year, I mean, no point, let me, let me just let the cat out of the bag. This year, we're going to be sponsoring the, the tournament to the tune of $18,000. This is what um, Massey agreed to do, and it will be $18,000 in cash and kind. It is our intention, once again, to outfit the finalists in the competition, um, and we hope we'll get the opportunity at some point to hand over the, the shirts and the and possibly caps that we will have for the finalists and of course their coaches as well. This year's Mass United Secondary Schools Cricket Tournament starts on February 14th with four matches daily. Archipo Secondary and Sir Arthur Lewis Community College are joint defending champions. Volleyballers from various schools on the island will converge on the VG Mullipopa Sports Complex on Thursday for a festival to be put on by the Ministry. This event has been described as a teaser ahead of the upcoming secondary schools competitions scheduled to get underway soon. Organizers are expecting to scout emerging talent and to assess the level of skills among the participants. Activities on the court at VG expected to get underway from 10 a.m. Young leaders will again be the focus of attention by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports with another stint of training for the young leaders in St. Lucia. Director of Youth, Mary Wilfred, tells us more about this latest initiative. Our local tutors are coming from um, clubs, um, youth and sports organizations. They're coming from faith-based organizations, non-governmental organizations. It's a four-day training. And in that training, they would encounter various modules that would teach leadership and team building to young people throughout the island. We are very excited because our last training was about three years ago. And so we need another cadre of local tutors that would be teaching throughout the island. We want to encourage young people who are interested in this training to come to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and speak to us because the training is free. You don't have to pay for it. And the skills that you would receive would be um, very beneficial to you and the organizations that you serve. Reminding you that if you are interested in being part of this training program, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is located on Upper Miku Street, Castries. You can visit us for more information on how to register. And you can also visit our Facebook page for more programs pertaining to youth and sports in St. Lucia. That's our update for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. See you next time. Thanks, Ryan. 49 chefs and bartenders are eager to mix things up in the hope of securing a spot on the national culinary team, which will battle for glory at the annual Taste of the Caribbean competition, is Anicia Antoine. The St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association has officially launched the SLHTA National Culinary Team Competition. The purpose of the competition is to select a team to contest in the annual Taste of the Caribbean Talk Competition being held in June. Talk is the region's premier food and beverage educational exchange and showcase, which creates an avenue for professionals to develop skills and establish relationships. Invitations were sent to hotels and restaurants of the SLHTA to identify chefs within the establishment whom have proven to be outstanding in their profession and are able to participate. First Vice President of the Board of Directors of the SLHTA, John Mathre, stated that this initiative is crucial to the sustainability of the tourism industry. An important part of our, of our mandate as a Board of Directors of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association and also that of the Tourism Enhancement Fund is to develop, enhance, and promote the human resource assets of our divergent membership. In today's instance, we are providing yet another fecund environment for the ongoing development of our culinary and beverage arts. Cuisine and culinary arts sit at the eminence of any vacation experience. Our tourism is diverse and it is also expansive in its offerings. One key component of its development process is to excite and stimulate learning and in general, and general interest in the arts. Collaborations and competition provide an avenue for that growth. 
The competition will be held at the Castries Comprehensive School on Saturday, the 9th of February 2019, and is expected to last three days. Upon completion, the selected chefs for the St. Lucia culinary team will then begin the training process for the Taste of the Caribbean competition. Richardson Skinner, executive chef of Coco Pam and team manager for the St. Lucia culinary team, stated that the SLHTA is dedicated towards creating a better structure for the team. In achieving this initiative, SLHTA, SLHTA's board has selected a team of professionals to form a culinary committee. This committee will be responsible for the formation, implementation and management of the new vision for the culinary team of St. Lucia. The launch took place at the Big Adams Hotel Bougainvillea Conference Room on Wednesday, February 6, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. There has been an urgent call for you to comply with the law regarding electrical inspections. The details of why, coming up after the break. Frankie, you know I'm traveling to Antigua this afternoon and I forgot my passport at home? Boy, it's a good thing I have my driver's license. I'll still be able to travel. Oh. How can you travel to Antigua without your passport? Under the OECS Freedom of Movement regime, OECS citizens can travel to any of the seven protocol member states without a passport. Once they have an official and valid identification card with their picture and nationality on it. Really? Since when? Since the establishment of the Eastern Caribbean OECS Economic Union, under the revised Treaty of Basté, it entered into force in 2011. So, you mean to tell me that I can leave St. Lucia and go to another OECS country with just my driver's license or national ID and customs and immigration won't stop me? Yes, you can even use your voter's registration card or social security card. As a matter of fact, as a citizen of an OECS protocol member state, you are entitled to indefinite stay when you travel to another OECS protocol member state so you can live and work without a work permit or skilled national certificate. As a construction worker here, I could take my trade to Grenada or any other OECS country? Yes, Frankie, you're straight. And what about my wife and children's schooling? Frankie, OECS citizens and their children will be granted equal rights and privileges under the freedom of movement. That includes access to social services, labor market schemes, health and education for your children and your wife. This free movement thing sounds nice. Hassle-free travel to any OECS country, live and work for as long as you like. The OECS Economic Union is the real deal. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Thanks for staying with NTN Nightly. Citizens and business owners are being urged to comply with the law regarding electrical inspections. The Electrical Division within the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor says this is to ensure public safety at all times. The Electrical Licensing Authority, ELA, within the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor is embarking on a public education drive on the legal requirements for routine inspections of domestic and commercial electrical connections. The Electricity Supply Act, which regulates the generation, transmission and distribution of electricity on the island, stipulates that all connections must undergo periodic inspections. According to the law, all commercial establishments must have electrical inspections done every two years, and for domestic connections, inspections must be done every five years. All swimming pools must undergo annual inspections. Acting Chief Electrical Engineer Mr. Shane Jean says authorities want consumers to appreciate the law is meant to ensure public safety. Most electrical defects, for example, if, when you have an electrical installation, right, it may be faulty, but these faults, basically you can consider they are symptomatic, right? They do not present themselves, right? It's not going to be a situation where you have a fault in an installation, right, and it's going to present itself immediately. For example, you may, ha you may have compromised ins insulations in your containment, in your, in your conduit for years, and it may not pre present itself until the day when it shuts out and you have a fire. You may have a fault to earth, 
right? And because nobody is, is, is um, interfering or touching a particular piece of equipment, it may not show up at all until that day when somebody touches it and they get electrocuted. So therefore, basically, it's, it's about safety, basically. And it's something I think that the general public should be um, interested in, should be concerned about. Citizens and business owners are advised that they are to hire a certified electrician as part of the procedure for applying with the electrical department for an inspection. Once a facility is inspected, it meets all requirements. An approval sticker is then affixed to the location, indicating it is safe and approved for an electrical connection. A certificate of approval is then issued within two business days. Basically, before a connection, when an installation is new, it has, before it is connected to the grid by Lucilec, it has to be inspected. But that is not the end of the process. Periodically, right, installations are supposed to be reinspected. The Electrical Licensing Authority ELA plans to hold meetings with key stakeholders, including the Consumer Association and the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, SLHTA, to promote greater adherence to the law. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, this is Shannon LeBon. And this brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel.